Hi and welcome back to Dusting History. Today I have the Queen of the Mist. This is Annie Edson Taylor. She was a 63 year old school teacher who became the first person to survive a trip over Niagara Falls in a barrel on October the 24th, 1901. Now this is the best quality version of this image I could find. I actually did approach several libraries, including the Niagara Falls Public Library, and they were very helpful, but uh, didn't actually come up with anything any better than this. And as you can see, there's all these vertical stripes through it, like someone's tried to paint something over it or varnish it or clean it improperly. And on the left, there's a ton of really heavy, bumpy uh, relief. So I'm gonna try and improve that by using the neural networks filters in Photoshop. Trying the scratch reduction, seeing if it actually does anything. The halftone reduction seems to work. It takes a bunch of the work, um, the noise out. But if you're not careful, a lot of these filters can actually soften out a lot of important details. So you've got to be very careful about using them. I always like to run a little JPEG artifact removal on these pictures too, because invariably that's the, the format that they arrive in. You can see I've got a fair bit of uh, improvement there without too much loss, which is terrific. So now I want to try to clean up and you can see I'm using a remove tool in Photoshop and doing a lot of vertical strokes trying to remove as much of those really stark lines as I can and you find that what you do or what I tend to do is pick on the really big ones first and then the next largest ones become the big ones and then you take them out and then you find the next largest and take them out and every time I revisit an area I can still see more of them. Uh, and they happen to be some of the fainter ones, but they're still there. And you just over a period of time, try to remove one after the other. But one of the difficulties is that say that barrel has wood grain or wood texture on it. And I want to be sure to try and preserve that. So how many of those vertical lines are damaged and how many are part of the natural photograph? And that's a, a judgment call you have to make. It's interesting, this stunt of Annie's was purely financial. She was a school teacher, as I said, she was 63 years old, she needed money. So she had this barrel commissioned to perfectly fit her body. She put her favorite cushions into it and she rode over the Horseshoe Falls. Then she spent the rest of her life posing for pictures like this one with the barrel trying to raise money. Um, but she, unfortunately she died penniless in 1921 and her funeral was paid for by public donations. So not a great, uh, not a great end for poor old Annie. And you can see the little cat that she's patting on the top of the barrel. Um, two days before her own attempt, uh, she, she took that cat and put it in a barrel and sent it over the falls first to test whether the cat would survive. And uh, there was a lot of rumor that the cat died, but in fact, they found it 17 minutes after they pushed it over the edge um, and it had a, um, it was bleeding from its head. And uh, then she, um, she took it, put it on the barrel and they snapped this shot. So she looks like a cat lover, but uh, probably not.
Now fortunately we have a few extra photos of Annie, nothing that lines up with this one, so making a taking replacement parts of her face and, and updating her face is going to be problematic. But what I can do is take the same hat, because she's got exactly the same hat on here, and see Marky select that out of that image, copy and paste it onto our image, and manipulate it around a little bit, and just imply a little bit more detail in the photo. I'm not going to uh, just pop it on 100%. I'm going to just selectively let some of those feathers poke through here and there. I'm just putting a bit of a grad on the top of the image there because I noticed that the black point on her hat was still quite grey and I figured it needed to be a little blacker. So as you can see I'm just grading that extra hat piece down and then with a mask I'm going to paint away the bits I don't want. Now in order to attack some of that grain, I'm going to use a frequency separation, which is basically a high pass filter. And again, I've talked about this in previous videos, you can download the action on the internet. So in the blurry part of the um, frequency separation, I'm going to just smooth out some of the things like the, um, some of the wood panelling here. I'm literally just painting greys there on the blurry side, trying to take some of the lumpiness out of the picture. Also just flattening out the sky a tiny bit, taking some of the heavy grain out of that as well. Now you can see it's in the high pass that a lot of that really aggressive grain is, is living. And so I'm going to try and select a mid-tone grey and then paint away some of, not, not actually remove entirely, but just paint down some of that hard grain. Now because that part of the image that has the really aggressive grain is quite soft focus already, I'm going to elect to do a small blur on the background, just a selective one, here you can see, and I'm not actually adding a lot of blur, I don't want to over blur it and make it feel incorrect, I just want to knock the edge off some of that grain. So with that blur selected I can also go back in with a mask and just paint areas either more blurry or less blurry with the mask. Now her hat must have been blowing in the wind because those feathers are quite soft and fluffy. So going back to that original reference, I'm just going to steal some feathers. And I have no problem doing this because I know that's actually her hat in that photo. It's the same hat. So they're the same feathers. So, you know, it makes sense.
Now I know this little kitten was probably soft, but for my liking that's a little too soft, so I'm going to try and introduce a little bit more detail into the cat's face as well, just so it's on a similar plane of focus to uh, Annie's face. So I basically searched for a similar looking kitten, and realistically I'm not going to do too much here, I'm just going to try and take a tiny bit more detail, in fact I'm going to blur it to the point where it hardly does anything, it just implies a little bit more uh, information in the picture. And because the cat's not a historically significant character, I think it's totally fine to do a little bit of this mani manipulation. So I'm going to move over to palette.fm now and the reason I'm looking at colour now before I've even finished cleaning the image up is because sometimes I think colour changes the way you see an image. So I'll make my way across the palettes across the top, picking different styles or looks and seeing any, if any of them actually look more photographic than the others. Generally what I'll do is download a handful of them and uh, cherry pick bits out of one or the other. And then of course I hand paint on top of that. I like some of them that have warm tones for the barrel. I also like some of them that have a cooler background, um, like there's a little bit of haze. It actually looks like there's a little bit of smoke rising from some you know, wood stack or something in the left. I quite like that. And I like how some of these palettes have a, a cooler note back there, like that. So you can see I'm just selectively painting from, uh, with a mask between two of the palettes I chose. So back to reference and a, a costume that's of the period, although that photo is quite green blue. So I'm going to dive into harmonization in the neural networks and pick the uh, layer of Annie Edson Taylor that I was working on. And you can see that by sliding the sliders around, I can make the reference image just slightly closer to the image I'm working on in terms of color, color temperature. So that when I select colors and start painting Annie's dress, I'm selecting something that's vaguely in the same kind of colour space as the image I'm, I'm currently working on. Now I'll typically do this where I'll paint one colour down for the dress like that but because it's got a satin finish I'll pick a little bit of sky blue and just put that a little bit into the highlights and what that does is just makes the fabric pop, makes it feel like it's got a bit of a sheen rather than just being one colour which I think makes um, a lot of colourisation look very dull. So typically I'll just work my way around the image trying to tell myself a story about the place and about what colour things might be, trying to use uh, reference if needed, um, and also just trying to make uh, the, the, the painting feel balanced and, and give it a nice sort of compositional feel in terms of the colour palette.
Moving on to the barrel, I'm just going to try and indicate that those uh, straps around the barrel are metal. And really that's that's not much of a colour, that's actually going back to pretty much to grey. You can see on the colour wheel there. It always amazes me how much grey looks like blue when it's against the warm tone. A little bit more work on the colour temperature here on her hands. Her hands look are looking a little deathly. I don't know if that's an iPhone 1, is it? It's an iPhone 4. Makes me wonder what the hell she was holding in her hand. <laughs> I'm not sure what that little box box is and why you'd hold it when you when you're posing for a photograph. A few more little tweaks. Not quite happy with the colour of the brickwork on the chimneys. And after quite a battle, I think I'm done. I hope you enjoyed that, as usual. Uh, and as usual, I had fun doing it. Love the story of Annie Edson Taylor. And I really love the fact I was able to clean up uh, this image, which is so often posted on the internet in such poor quality. Thanks very much. See you next time.